brothers to hear the Buddha Dharma, now we hear it. If we do not receive awakening in the present life, then in what life can we hope to receive it? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the sea. I take refuge in the land. May we, together as one, begin on the great path of enlightenment, holding in our hearts the supreme aspiration. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we, together as one, enter the storehouse of the Dharma and attain true wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we, together as one, united in the spirit of universal brotherhood as a member of the Sangha, strive to live for the enlightenment of all beings. I join Like to, we would like to ask the uh, temple representatives to offer in, to um, do the sweet tea offering and the flower offering, please. First, uh, Higash Honganji Buddhist Temple.
next to Jodo Shiu Buddhist Temple. Then, how about Koyasan Buddhist Temple? Jiren Buddhist Temple. Nishi Honganji. Senshin Buddhist Temple. Zen Shuji.
Thank you. Um, next, we'll have a musical offering by the Otani Gakuen. Uh, they will be singing Inochi Mainichi Atarashi, translated, which means life renewed every day.
Thank you to uh, Mrs. Kazue Funai and the Otani Gakuen for the wonderful musical presentation. Uh, next, I would like to ask Reverend Bill Briones, the uh, president of the Los Angeles Buddhist Temple Federation, uh, to deliver his welcome message. Good morning. Good morning to all of you here in person and for all those who are Zooming this morning. Good morning. You know, welcome to this year's Los Angeles Buddhist Temple Federation Hanumatsuri celebration. Every year, the Federation comes together to commemorate the birth of the historical Shakyamuni Buddha. Unfortunately, as you know, last year in 2020, uh, 2020 I'm sorry, two years ago, 2020, we had to cancel our celebration due to the COVID. And last year, we only did virtual service at Senshuji Buddhist Temple. So hopefully next year, we can all come together without Zoom. The Federation, also known as the Butsurin, consists of seven local Buddhist temples, Higashi Honganji, Joroshu, Koyasan, Nichiren, Nishi Honganji, Senshin Buddhist Temple, and Senshuji. And this year, Thanks to Higashi Honganji, where they are hosting the event. Thank you very much. This year's theme is to discover the meaning of our birth and find joy in living. Kind of a long theme, but nonetheless, it's a very important theme. As we take pause in our lives, as we look at our current events of what's going on in the world, and with COVID, it's really time to think about, it's a time to reflect upon the uh, birth of Shakyamuni Buddha as special as well as our life as our as our birth. So we're very fortunate today to have our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Mark Uno, which uh, Reverend uh, Nori Hito will introduce. Oh, good morning, everyone, and uh, uh, thanks to all of you for joining us for our Hanumatsuri celebration for this year. Uh, as uh, our, our president, Reverend Brionis, uh, mentioned, uh, we were hoping that we can have a full-fledged Hanumatsuri with everyone uh, welcome to come, uh, but still the pandemic is uh, going on, and so we had to limit the, uh, the numbers of uh, people here, but uh, I see that there's like about 175 uh, people who are online, so uh, that's a wonderful thing. Um, <clears throat> this year for our, our keynote speaker, we uh, in invited or asked uh, Reverend Dr. Mark Uno uh, to uh, be our speaker, and uh, he was a Hanamatsuri speaker way back when we were having these huge celebrations like at uh, Janam uh, in the courtyard and so forth, and JACCC. And uh, he was one of the early uh, speakers uh, way back then. Uh, re more recently, in 2016, uh, we at the Higashi Honganji had our uh, world, uh, uh, world gathering uh, with members coming from Japan, from Brazil, and Hawaii. And uh, Mark was our speaker at that time also. And it was uh, everyone enjoyed him so much. And uh, we we're looking forward to another uh, occasion to be able to invite him. Uh, he, he is uh, up in Eugene, Oregon, and he will be joining us on Zoom, uh, but it will be a live uh, a talk instead of a recorded one. Um, Mark Uno uh, is Professor of, Reverend, of, of Buddhist Studies and Department Head of Religious Studies at the University of Oregon, specializing in Pure Land, Zen, and Shingon Buddhism. He is the 14th generation minister of Shin Buddhism in his family lineage. He is the author of Shingon Refractions, Myoe and the Mantra of Light, uh, editor of Buddhism and psych uh, Psychotherapy across, across Cultures, and author of articles on Japanese Buddhism, Comparative Religious Thought, Interreligious Dialogue, and Buddhism and Psychotherapy. He is the president of the Society for Buddhist Christian Studies. His Buddhist essays are published in such 
Buddhist journals as Tricycle, Buddha Dharma, The Practitioner's Quarterly, and Lion's Roar. Um, so you can see that uh, Reverend Dr. Mark Bruno has, has, uh, you know, has been uh, very, uh, what do you call it, uh, taking the lead in, in introducing Buddhism uh, to uh, American scholars. And uh, we are very fortunate to have him uh, as our speaker today. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the Reverend Dr. Mark Unno. Thank you so much. First, let me say, uh, uh, extend my deepest thanks and appreciation to Reverend Brionis and the Los Angeles Buddhist Temple Federation and to Bishop uh, Noyaki Ito and the Higashi Onganji Buddhist Temple in Los Angeles for inviting me uh, to be the speaker for this Hanamatsuri event. So I wanna begin by um, sharing with you uh, a simple presentation that I have prepared. And this is our baby Buddha uh, uh, with, uh, in the Hanamatsuri celebration, an arrangement made by my wife, Megumi. So just wanted to let you know, um, Hanamatsuri is here in Eugene, Oregon as well. When we think of Hanamatsuri, which is the Buddha's birthday, I think there are some questions that arise for us. Who was the Buddha? When was he born? How old is he? And I think one of the things we can think about um, in terms of the Buddha's birthday is that for the first time in our world, the Buddha who was born as the prince in India, Siddhartha, opened his eyes when he was born. And even though his enlightenment, his awakening, is celebrated as having occurred at the age of 35, really we could say that his journey of awakening began when he first opened his eyes when he was born. But then the question arises, what does it mean to open one's eyes, to be truly awakened? Uh, what is the meaning of Bodhi? awakening. And I think in today's celebration, thinking about the fact that we not only have uh, Jodo Shinshu, which is my own background, but also Zen Buddhism and Shingo Buddhism represented here, that we need to think about the universal significance of the Buddha way of our Buddhist path. I think all schools of Buddhism share in the understanding that what we awaken out of is our delusions, our attachments, our bonno or blind passions. And that is the real meaning of awakening. So for example, in my own work, I have, uh, I have mostly studied the work of the founder of Jodo Shinshu or Shin Buddhism, Shinran, who says, Namo Amida Butsu. I, this foolish being filled with attachments and blind passions, entrust myself to Amida Buddha, the awakening of infinite light. But I think we find similar expressions in other traditions, such as in Soto Zen Buddhism, in which Dogen, the founder of Soto Zen Buddhism, uh, teaches us to let go into the light of awakening. So in today's presentation, I just want to share with you some brief stories uh, about um, what is the significance of the Buddha's birthday in which his journey of awakening unfolds and which is the great gift of his Dharma treasure to us. But I'm gonna change these a little bit. 
So the first story that I want to share with you has to do with a slightly humorous story that comes from my own experience. I teach a course that is Introduction to Asian Religions. And that's the largest course that I teach. Typically about 100, 120 students take that every year. And I feel very fortunate here to be here at the University of Oregon uh, with a lot of enthusiastic students. One year after giving my final lecture, one of the students came up to me and said, Mr. Uno, can I ask you a question? And I said, certainly, what is it? And she said, this year you had us read the Tan Nisho, which is the sayings and teachings of the founder of Jodo Shinshu Shin Buddhism, Shindan Shonin. And it said that it was translated by Taitetsu Unno. Are you related? <laughs> and in the moment she said that, I thought, oh, she recognizes brilliance <laughs> when she sees it. <laughs> Hi, Hiroshi. <laughs> but then she said, and then I replied, yes, we are related. In fact, Taitetsu Unno is my father. And she said, I thought so, because on the back cover, there's a small photograph of my father. And she said, you both have the same nose. It wasn't about my father's brilliance. It was certainly not about my brilliance. What she noticed was that we both have the large Uno nose. In that moment, I started laughing because I realized I was thinking she was recognizing my father's brilliance and my own brilliance, but no, it was the shape of our nose. But that too becomes part of the story of my path of awakening to realize I was attached to my idea about who I thought I was. But through this student, the Buddha's gentle hand of compassion illuminated my ignorance, my foolishness, and led me deeper into the path of the Buddha's awakening. I think that in this regard, we are always supported and sustained by the great power of the Buddha's awakening, regardless of which tradition we come from. So certainly in Jodo Shinshu, we talk about Amida Buddha's great compassion, but Amida Buddha is not some being way out there. No, Amida Buddha is the deepest, truest reality of the self. And yet we are blind to the presence of the Buddha's great compassion that sustains us from deep within. Why? Because my mind is always distracted and confused by my attachments to superficial things. And also in Zen Buddhism, I think the great master Dogen recognized the same thing. For that reason, he said, to truly practice the Buddha way, is to throw one's whole being into the realm of the Buddha and to receive the practice from the side of the Buddha. Again, the Buddha is not some being out there, but is our own deep Buddha nature deep within. And the figure that I studied representing the Shingon school, Myoe Shoni, also said the same thing. When we chant the mantra of light, the Komyo Shingong, we are invited to receive the great power of all of the Buddhas, of Mahavirochana, of the Buddha Aksobhya, and all of the great Buddhas. Excuse me for a moment. For some reason, my light went out here.
Sorry about that. Oh, I hear music. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, Tracy. So I want to relate another story about how to how we are illuminated by the Buddha's great wisdom, the Buddha's great compassion. Awakening is an expression of sight, but also we have expressions of hearing the Dharma, especially in Jodo Shinshu, we emphasize listening deeply and hearing deeply. So I want to relate to you the story of an experience I had almost 20 years ago when I was a visiting professor at Kyoto University. And at that time, I was invited to be a respondent to a set of papers presented by graduate students from Kyoto University. Now, because this was not my main field, I hesitated, but because it was graduate students, I said, okay, I'll come. And usually when graduate students present, there are only 10, 15 people in the audience. So I had just got to Japan and this was in the fall. And uh, I arrived at Kyoto International Conference Center. And I went to the front desk and they gave me the directions for the room that I was supposed to present in. But as I was following the directions, it took me closer and closer to the main conference hall, which holds over 2,000 people. And I was a bit confused. I opened the door and there were already over 1,500 people in the room. It was amphitheater style seating. I went to the bottom and there was a table for the four graduate students who were presenting. And there was a smaller table for the two people who were responding. There was my name. And then the other name was Dr. Hayao Kawai. And he was the founder and president of the Japanese Association of Clinical Psychology. So suddenly I understood because nobody there even knew who I was. They all came to listen to Dr. Kawai. When he sat down, we greeted each other. And he said to me, Uno san, Uno san, go for, go for. He said, Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. So you just speak for five minutes and I'll respond to all of the graduate students' oh. presentations. A big sigh of relief, a big sigh of relief. I'm only gonna relate the story of one of the presentations, which was by a young woman who was a PhD student at Kyoto University. And as part of her work, she was assigned as a counselor at a local junior high school. And she reported on the case of one student that she counseled. Let's see, Higashi Honganji Buddhist Temple. Do you want to put the screen on the speaker screen? Thank you. And, and this student told the story of a young girl that she counseled who was only 14 years old in junior high, but she was a very, very talented musician playing the violin. And her teacher encouraged her to keep playing the violin, took her to concerts whenever famous solo artists came from around the world. She was introduced to the best teachers. But then why did she come for counseling? She came for counseling because she was told, you know, your grandma, was deaf and she could not hear. And your great aunt also had the same problem. And this was a genetic condition. So we could have you tested to see if you too might have the same gene. But whenever there's genetic testing, the person is required to go to counseling 
because even if they're not deaf at that time, the result of the test could be devastating. So she was sent to the counselor. The young girl thought about it and she said, I want to have the test. I want to find out. So they waited two weeks. The results came back. And sure enough, it came out positive, which is not a good thing because she tested positive for the gene for deafness. And the doctor told her 99.9% .9 chance you are going to become completely deaf in a few years. This was devastating to her. She went to her weekly appointment with the counselor from Kyoto University. And the counselor could not say anything to her, even though she was in the PhD program at the top university for counseling in all of Japan. She had studied so many techniques, so many methods. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna say to a young girl who has just lost all her hopes and dreams? And in fact, this young girl said to the counselor, when I received the results of this test, I died. She didn't say, I felt like I died. She said, I died. But I think if we think about it, this is perfectly understandable because she was eating, drinking, breathing, dreaming, sleeping, violinist. This was her whole life. And now everything was being taken away from her. So they spent the remainder of the time in complete silence. And then the girl left. The next week, the counselor was there. She wasn't sure whether the young junior high student would come again, but she came. And again, she didn't know what to say. So for the whole hour, just silence, silence. And then again, the next week, and the next week, this went on for several weeks until finally the young girl spoke up. She said, She said, I think I'm going to go visit my grandma and my great auntie at the cemetery. And so she went, there was a considerable train ride to get there. She went by herself and the next week she came back for her counseling session. Again, at first, it was just complete silence. But this time, the young girl began to speak up. She said, at first, I was so angry. I said, Grandma, why did you do this to me? To give me such a great musical gift, only to take it away from me before I could fully enjoy it. Great auntie, why did you do this to me? But then she said, but after a while, I just fell silent. And when I fell silent, it was almost as if I could hear the voices of my grandma and my great auntie. And I responded to them and I said, how hard it must have been for you when you didn't have counseling, when there was so, when you faced so much more prejudice and you must have suffered so much just because you were deaf and it had nothing to do with anything you did, but you were strong. You raised my mother. 
She gave birth to me and she's been a great mother and you lived your life. Then she turned to the counselor and she said, you know, I have come to feel a much deeper connection with my grandma and my auntie than ever before. So deeply connected. And they are giving me the strength to go on. And I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. But I feel I can face the future now because I have the support and the love of my grandmother and my auntie, as well as my parents. And when I heard the story, it was so powerful. It was so powerful. And I think that even though this counselor, I have no idea whether she was Buddhist or not, it doesn't make any difference because it expresses the heart of human understanding and the power of the depths of love and compassion, which bonds all of us together. And when we realize all suffering beings are one with me, that I'm naturally led to become one with all beings. And I think this is a great story that illustrates the true meaning of deep listening and deep hearing. Deep listening means I realize, I think I understand people, I think I understand myself, I think I know others, I think I know what I mean when I speak, but I really don't. The young counselor who was the PhD student, she had a great deal of confidence coming from the best university in Japan. But before this young girl who said, I die, she was completely powerless. She was completely powerless to be able to say anything. But to her credit, she didn't try to cover it over with some fake words, but rather she listened deeply with her whole being from the place of silence deep within. And because of that, the young girl was moved to want to hear the voiceless voice of her grandma and her great auntie. Isn't it ironic that it took the report of her inevitable deafness for this young girl to have her spiritual ears open so that she could hear the voice of great compassion arising from deep within her grandma, her auntie, and ultimately from deep within herself. So I wanna share a brief video with you that, that illustrates how it is that we may think others or ourselves are filled with foolishness, that we are incapable, but that when we are illuminated by the power of reality that comes to us from others, from nature and the universe itself, then the great wisdom of the Buddha, the great compassion of the Buddha is released in reality within our own hearts and fills the universe.
a beautiful video, beautiful story about this young girl who was diagnosed with severe autism. And the doctors told the parents, she is not going to be able to function in society. And you'll just have to take care of her physical needs, but don't expect that she will be able to interact with others. But the parents refused to give up hope. And especially her mother did everything she could to bring to Iris Grace things she might enjoy, taking her out into nature, giving her a paintbrush and watercolors, bringing her a friend in the form of her cat. And that is very much like the great power of the Buddha's awakening of wisdom and great compassion. In our tradition of Shin Buddhism, we say, and uh, what's the girl's name? Gazi. We are received into the great power of the Buddha's compassion that grasps us never to let go. And that power is deep, deep within each of us. Deep within each of us. So I want to conclude by sharing with you a few poems because this is now, we are now beginning the third year of the pandemic. There's much less cases now and hopefully things are gonna continue in a good direction. But we know from the patterns of the last two years, we can't let our guard down yet. This is the first poem I wrote in early March of 2020. And this is a photograph of cherry blossoms that bloomed early right near our house at our neighbor's house. In the time of coronavirus, the vast shimmering sky blue outlines delicate pink petals, cherry blossoms early this year, so calm and beautiful this day in March, yet so eerie and unfamiliar in the time of coronavirus. Streets empty of cars and people, except the lonely few in this time of social distancing. We find ourselves turning within, anxious thoughts, concerns, unfurling against the background of the limitless light of great compassion. After my walk, I returned home again in deep silence and I sat before my butsudan, led to bow, palms together, realizing all beings are one with me and I am led to become one with all beings. Amida Buddha, her heart of great compassion, opening, illuminating, enveloping, dissolving, deep within my heart, her heart, Namo Amida Buddha. The next poem I wanna share with you This was from 2021, March of 2021. Cherry blossoms anew, tranquil in the blue skies. Since last I saw the flowers of this tree one year ago. Pandemic just unfolding then. Now, new life, new hope, change the only constant, unfurling against the vastness of space, the love that holds us from deep within, great compassion, limitless, palms together, namo amidabha. And just a few days ago, I wrote my poem for this year. 
Two years ago, the pandemic came calling. Alpha, Delta, Omicron, their names. It seems like yesterday and yet a world away. Now hurled into the time of deadly war, thinking of the people of Ukraine, life so fragile, yet their spirits powerful. Cherry blossoms return, petals so delicate, yet their life force unstoppable, unfolding against the vast blue sky. So, so you think you can tell? Heaven from hell, blue skies from pain. Can you tell a green field from a cold steel rail, a smile from a veil? Do you think you can, you can tell? Words from a song by Pink Floyd. And yes, now I know all beings are one with me. Therefore, I am moved to become one with all beings. I, this foolish being, put my palms together and bow, diving into the ocean of a limitless light. Namo Amida Butsu. So I hope that I have been able to share with you something of the significance of Hanamatsuri, the Buddha's birthday, whose journey of awakening began not at the moment of Nirvana at the age of 35, from, but from the very moment of his birth. And when we return to the original question that I shared with you, how old is the Buddha? Then we can answer, the Buddha is as old as me. Because we know that every step we take, the Buddha takes with us through the rain and the snow, through the sunshine and the blue skies. The unfolding of great wisdom and compassion is a ceaseless activity if only we would awaken to its presence deep, deep within each of us. Thank you so much. Namo Shakamuni Butsu, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amida Butsu. Now, I'd just like to share a few words in Japanese. この集いは、私どもの浄土真宗のみならず、Los Angeles Buddhist Federation uh, Federation of Temples に代表されている禅宗の方々や真言宗の方々、他の宗派の方々もここにおられますので。え、え、仏の家に投げ入れて、仏の方より行われて、これに従い持っていく時力も入れず心も費やさずして生死を離れ、仏となる。
三田の本願には老将善悪の人を選ばれずただ新人を要とすと知るべし華厳宗新厳宗の名愛商人曰く恩阿ボギャーベーロシャのマガボダラマニハンドマジンバラハラバリタヤウォンこれをまあ簡単に要約するとオーンシャカニョライヨ大日ニョライヨアシュクニョライヨ宝生ニョライヨアミダニョライヨ光を放ってうんこれら道元禅寺親鸞書に妙書に共通しているのは人間の存在はただ単に頭で考える考えている自分ではなくもっともっと深いところに言葉を超えた世界にその仏性の働きその阿弥陀如来のご本が、えー、諸仏のえー、家事の力が常に働き続け我々に働きかけ続けているのではないだろうかということであると思います。ともすると我々は普段日常生活の中ではあれをしなくちゃいけないこれもしなくちゃいけないあれが欲しいあれが欲しいこの人は好きこの人は嫌い。いろんな妄想、いろんな思いに駆られてダイ,ナミダイナミックに瞬間瞬間に展開している本当の命の働きに気づくことが忘れられているのではないでしょうか。私は浄土真宗の、えー、僧侶としてえーえー、雲野家では14代目です。日本では11代それが続き、12代目、うちの、えー、祖父、雲野遠良は1935年に渡米してまいりました。その一応の理由は、えー、お寺を支えるために、えーえー、その住職を務めるのみならず、えー、学校の先生も、えー、兼ねて、えー、その、えー、お寺を支えようとしたんですがそのためには龍谷大学に行って、えー、学校先生の資格を取ってお寺に戻ったんです。で当時その龍谷大学の学費というものは決して高いものではなかったんですが、えー、おじいちゃんにとっては、えー、そのために借金してなかなかそれが払い返せなかったんですそれで金融センスの優れたおじいちゃんはよしアメリカに行って開教師になって十分稼いで日本に戻ってそして借金を払い返そうという考えだったんです<笑>しかしその間戦争が起こり収容所に家族ぐるみで収容所に送られてそして結局アメリカに残ったっていうことなんです。私は1984年に大学卒業後京都大学に留学しました。仏教学を勉強するためにえ、えあ京都大学に留学しましまたおじいちゃんはもう80歳代でもうあとは長くないだろうと思って僕を勉強部屋に連れて行ってそしてえ五仏園の大切さその意義を一生懸命話してくれようとしましたが当時の私はなかなかわからなかったんです。で、その中でおじいちゃんが伝えてくれた、えー、ひ,とひと言は、わしは渡米してきてから
本当に仏法、信心のことが分かるまでに17年間もかかったんだって。そのことがとっても印象的でした。1935年、祖父が渡米してきたときに、父の運の大鉄はたった6歳でした。えー、九州のその港まで、えー、父のひ,ひおばあちゃんが見送りに行きました。父はたった6歳だったんですがその時ひおばあちゃんいわく「大鉄ちゃん大鉄ちゃん」「名も阿弥陀仏だけは忘れなさんのよ」って一応祖父は借金を払い返すためにある程度蓄えて日本に帰ろうという意味でアメリカに渡ってきたわけですがしかし私が今度日本に留学する直前におじいちゃんが話してくれたことは日本からアメリ,アメリカに渡ってきた本当の理由は借金なんぞ関係ない仏様の知恵、おじじに気づかせていただくために渡ってきたんだいうことを伝えようとすしたんです、その時。父も一生。父は8年前、85歳で亡くなりましたが、一生、ひおばあちゃんのこと言葉を忘れることはなかったです。父も一応大学教授になって、そしてそのカリアを全うして、また幸いにもそのご仏縁をいただき、皆さんとその、えーえー、仏道を共に歩みさせていただきましたが父も大学先生になって社会に認められるために自分の道を歩んだわけではなくただひたすらに南無阿弥陀仏を忘れず南無阿弥陀仏に照らされて仏道を歩ませていただくために生きてきたんだっていうことを私は身をもってしみじみ感じさせていただきましたひおばあ私のおばあちゃん運の花は8080歳代まで生き,生き行きましたが、最後におばあちゃんにお見舞いに行ったとき、サンタモニカの病院に入ってました。訪ねて行ったときに、おばあちゃんは、そのあ、病室に入っておりまして、横になってました。僕はその時おばあちゃんに89歳にして、いまだに美人でよかったねって冗談を交わしました。その時おばあちゃんも微笑んで、一緒に笑うことができました。それが5分、10分、15分続きましたが、最後の方に急におばあちゃんの声が、表情が変わって、あんたもう帰りなさい。もう遅くなってきたから帰りなさいって言われたんです。それはなぜかというと、はっとその時気がついたんです
、これがおばあちゃんに会うのが最後。ただ単に冗談をカオスだけじゃ、もうお前帰れということなんです。ご褒美はどうなんだご仏縁はどうなんだっておばあちゃんは言いたかったんです。その時私は、はっと気がついて、おばあちゃんのおかげで、私は阿弥陀如来の大悲に触れさせていただきました。ありがとうって言ったんです。もう死に間際の89歳のおばあちゃんはほとんど声が出なかった。パーキンソンスでほとんど声が出なかったんですよ。でもその時だけは大きな声を張り上げて、よう言ったって言ってくれたんです。よう言った。それがおばあちゃんの最後の仏法の宝物の私への贈り物だったんです。シャキャムニ・ブッダ was born over 2500 years ago as Siddhartha Gautama in the faraway land of India. But when was the Buddha's real birthday? The Buddha's real birthday is right now. For in this moment, when the Buddha awakens within each of us, then we are realized all beings are one with me. And I am led to become one with all beings. And I think the power of the Buddha's compassion, the power of the Buddha's wisdom, the power of the Buddha's great vow is the same whether one is Pure Land, Jodo Shu, Jodo Shin Shu, Zen Buddhist, Soto Shu. Binzai Shu, Shingon Shu, it's all the same. How fortunate we are to be together today to celebrate the Buddha's birthday, who is being born within each of us in every moment, in this very moment. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. On behalf of not just myself, but my whole family, to the Los Angeles Buddhist Temple Federation, to Reverend Brionis, to Reverend Noriaki Ito, to all our friends, old and new, who have gathered today for this precious celebration of Hanamatsu. Thank you so much. Namo Shakamuni Butsu, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida. And I return the Zoom session back to Higashi Honganji Temple. Thank you. Dr. <laughs> Reverend Mark Uno, as always, very inspiring. You have to turn the sound down. Yeah. And um, very memorable, and so thank you.、Um, we did sort of slot some time for QA questions and answers.、Um, so, if there are, you know, we can take, probably take a few if,、um, well, hopefully he's still there.、Yes. Um, so, if anybody has any questions,、um, I think we will allow one person to speak at a time.
Um, or you can send a chat message. So if there are any questions, we're opening it up. Are there any questions in the chat already? No, no questions <laughs> in the chat. No questions in the chat. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't appear to be there. There don't appear to be any questions. So that, um, that's fine. So again, thank you to uh, Dr. Reverend Mark Uno for the wonderful message, and uh, we will now um, have the closing words from Reverend Noriaki Ito. Well, uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank. Reverend Dr. Mark Unlo for very, very inspiring messages in both English and Japanese. And I think that uh, uh, by, ha by having uh, Reverend Dr. Mark as our speaker, uh, it really kind of uh, made our Hanamatsuri that much more meaningful. And so we thank him from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, also, thanks to uh, all of the members that came from uh, various temples uh, to join us in person. And then to all of the others, uh, like 170 or so, who uh, joined us on Zoom, I'd like to thank all of the ministers for uh, coming this morning to participate in the Hanamatsui, and uh, to, to thank also our Otani Gakuen for the wonderful song, and all of our members who uh, uh, helped to prepare for Hanamatsui. Uh, we hope to see you again soon, and thank you. Uh, for uh, and then also thanks to our streaming crew, Jason and Jerry, uh, for a great job. Uh, we didn't have any glitches today, so we were very happy about that. Um, yeah. So anyway, at any rate, uh, it's already uh, 11:40, and so it's probably time to uh, get some lunch or something like that. And so again, thank you all for for joining us for Hanamatsuri this year. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Ito. Um, so um, uh, the other thing is we want to thank um, Lisa Shimamoto and the members of Bombu Taiko and the various donors who uh, donated the flowers and then also beautifully decorated our Hanamido again this year. So thank you to all of them and especially to the donors and to, uh, to Lisa for coordinating everything. Um, so th that concludes our service for today, for this year. And so we do have flowers available for the uh, for the people who attended to take with them, but also for those of you who want to um, to offer sweet tea, please, please do so. But that concludes our service. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We hope to see you all in person next year. So uh, please take care. Thank you. <laughs>